Good afternoon and welcome to today's live talk where we aim to help you be more informed when moving through these unprecedented times. You have been asking us for help, advice, guidance when it comes to buying and selling in the UK and it's because of your questions that we're all here today. When it comes to your questions, we've been inundated. We've had hundreds if not thousands of them, but they all broadly fall into two key areas. Essentially, you've been asking us, should you move right now or can you move right now? So to help us scratch the surface on some of these questions, we've enlisted the help of two industry experts. Our first expert is uh, Daniel Berea. Uh, now, Daniel Berea is a data analyst for Rightmove, um, and it's Rightmove's popularity that puts Daniel in a really unique position. It's, um, so I'm just checking this one here. Yeah, it's Rightmove's um, popularity that puts Daniel in a really unique position. He gets to see how many different things including the coronavirus, affect the property market on a national level. Giving him amazing insight into the movements and trends um, of the property industry as a whole. Now, our second guest is Mark Hayward. Now, Mark um, is CEO of the NAEA, the National Association for Estate Agents. And for those of you on the line that might not know, the NAEA is the leading professional body for estate agents. Their aim is a really simple one, is to uphold good practice and high standards within the industry. And that's really important because it's the estate agent that is the trusted hero on the high street. It's the estate agent that is your local community specialist and they really understand what makes your town tick. So before I introduce you to Mark and Dan and answer some of your questions, I just needed to offer you a small disclaimer. Everything that is happening right now is new to us all. We're all doing the best to navigate these circumstances as they develop. We're all in this together. In everything that we discussed today, remember that the number one priority for every single one of us should be our health, our safety, and our well-being. Adhering to the latest advice from government and NHS should override any advice that you hear from any of us today or anywhere else. And lastly, as things are moving so quickly, it's really important that we all stay as up to date as possible. So what might sound like sound advice right now could be completely different in a week's time. So it's important to make sure that you're checking in on this. So we've only got 45 minutes available to us today. So let's try and get through as many of your questions as we can and clear up some of the confusion. Um, now, obviously, there has been so many questions that have come through, um, and I'm aware um, that we're not going to be able to get through all of them. So please be, don't be disappointed if we don't ask your question. We have selected questions which broadly answer as many of the ones that have come in as possible. Our first point of call is for those who are concerned about market conditions, and that's whether you should bring your property onto the market or be taking your property off the market and anything around those points. So at this point, I wanna introduce you all to Daniel. Um, Daniel. Uh, it's, there we are. Hi, Dan, how are you doing, you okay? Hey, hello. I'm well, Jason, how are you? Yeah, good. Uh, making use to my new makeshift office. Um, so Dan, <laughs> as all of thank, us are. yeah, I know, right? Um, thank you very much for joining us today. I, I, I know you guys are busy, and we, we've got a lot of questions, so we're going to jump straight in. In well, we're going to jump straight into the deep end, if that's okay, because I've got some tough ones to kick off with. Um, and firstly, Sam wanted to know: Should I take my house off the market? Is there even anyone looking at property right now? Yeah, is there even a market? That's that's a big question, and look. Um, we're we're definitely in uncharted territory here, right? I mean, I, I I think the word unprecedented has been used now in the last few weeks, probably more than it ever has, certainly in my lifetime. You know, so well, one thing is that, and, and we can see this in the activity on right move. You know, some things in life remain constant, even in very uh, uncertain times, and one of those is the need for a home, the need to, to find a home, right? Uh, so in spite of everything, surprisingly, or maybe unsurprisingly, given the circumstances, actually, we're still seeing a lot of people on right move. There are still millions of searches happening and thousands of inquiries coming through. So so yes, there there is still very much a market. I think the fact that, that this webinar 
has uh, generated so much interest and has been fully booked so quickly shows that there's definitely a lot of people um, with a huge interest in, in what's happening in the market right now. You know, now, so if we, we tend to look at the market like it's comprised by two different groups. One of them is what we could call the, the discretionary market. So these are people who would like to move homes, upsize, downsize, buy, sell, uh, when the time is right, when the conditions are right. And then the second group are the, the must-move market. So these are people who are in situations in which they absolutely have to move. Right, they don't have much of a of a choice. So these are people who are in the middle of of relocating, maybe for employment, or maybe there's a baby on the way, and they need to find a new place to accommodate for that, or or maybe uh, changes in family circumstances, divorces, in some cases, sadly, deaths. So for whatever situation, these are still people who apt to fall into that category of we must move. We can't just wait until there's a better time. And these are the people who we see are very active on right move right now, sending through inquiries and all the rest. Um, some of those may afford to, to, to hit pause on their plans for a short time, uh, but they're still doing their homework right now. So they're shortlisting properties, they're making their plans, they're getting in touch with estate agents and getting everything into in place so that when, so that the moment that things are unlocked, curfew is, is lifted, uh, they'll, be a, they'll be able to move ahead very quickly. So we're expecting actually to see a massive spike the moment that this lockdown is over and, and, and the activity in right move and in transactions, right? So if you look at, if you imagine a, a graph that tells us the, the, the number of transactions and people buying and selling homes, you know, it may go through a bit of a dip or something like that. But the moment this is lifted, we expect to see this massive spike of all the people who are just on this wait and see moment, just ready to crack on with things the moment that, that they can. Um, estate agents are, are, are being very, very creative and playing their part in getting things moving, right? And, and connecting those who are selling homes with those who are, are buying. They're playing a fundamental role and joining those two parties together and finding the most creative ways of making things work. So absolutely, yes, there's still the market, things are still moving, and there's no need to, 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 go, to come to a total standstill. Um, Jay, if I may, uh, this is a little, bit on the, a little bit off topic, but I was just mentioning the state agents, and I just wanted to shout out for, uh, to, to a few agents out there now across the country, some that I've been in contact with, not, not physical contact, by the way, obviously on the phone <laughs> or via email, but um, we're hearing some amazing stories of agents who, who are stepping up right now and, and uh, putting themselves forward as real pillars in their communities uh, and, and, and helping their, their communities to, to, um, to move forward with things, with helping uh, the most vulnerable and or the elderly in communities by doing shopping trips for them, dropping things off for, for them. Across the country, we are seeing so many of these stories and I think it's just encouraging really to see uh, and it's, it's touching as well. So, so I just wanted to, to shout out to, to and mention that uh, to, to if there are any agents out there watching, you guys are doing a really, really fantastic job an amazing job at a really difficult difficult time um so essentially that yeah to answer in sam's question no um, you, you, there is no need for you to come off the market right now um there are still people looking on right move there is still a lot of activity going on and agents are being extremely proactive and creative now it, it seems like a, an appropriate time for me to introduce everyone to mark um and mark's been very patiently waiting in the back background um waiting for his moment so hello mark hello Good afternoon, Hi, everybody. I'm well. Excellent. Mark, thank you again uh, so much for joining us today. Um, so based on what, what, what Daniel's just said, I mean, are, are you seeing the same? Are you hearing the same from estate agents? Are you seeing the same level of, uh, of creativity? Uh, are, are they still fighting to make things go through for people? Uh, ab ab absolutely. Um, as Daniel said, they are creative. <clears throat> they work and live in your area, so they are part of the community uh, and they're doing all they can, not only to um, assist where a sale has been achieved, 
but also to reassure uh, the seller that when this uh, appalling situation does ease, there will be a marketplace there. Uh, they're recommending again, as Dan said, not to take the property off the market. All the hard work's already been done. Um, the only thing they might want to do is uh, take some more external photographs uh, when the leaves come out on the trees. So there, there is a market there. They are receiving uh, inquiries. And even if you haven't put your house on the market yet, talk to an agent because they, they will know your property very well. They may have sold it before. They've got historical information uh, that they can give you. And they can talk to you about some of the things that you might have an opportunity to do to your property uh, whilst you're confined to your home. Yeah, and exactly that. And you know what, that that links perfectly into my next question, because it was going to be on the flip side to should I take my house off the market? And um, we've had a whole range of questions coming in. One example being, uh, should I put my house on the market now as planned? Um, or should I wait and see? My agent's ready to go to the market. It waits on me. Um, I, I wouldn't wait. Um, obviously, we're in, in this pause situation at the moment. We know historically the number of houses on the market has been very, very low. Uh, we know the interest that was shown subsequent to the election and the Brexit issue was very strong. And there's no reason to say that that won't continue uh, once we move um, forward. Dan, do you have anything to offer yeah, for also, uh, the same question? Yeah, well, the, the guidance that the government has been given so has, has given so far uh, is also that does not in any way require that uh, that we stop uh, that everything in the in the market. We can still very much put our um, come onto the market if if we feel that that is the right thing for for each of us. Uh, I guess we just need to be prepared to be a little bit more flexible, you know, and be willing to work in slightly different ways than we usually would. Um, the main hurdle maybe to come into market now is probably the fact that that we can't have anyone coming uh, to visit our home. Right. Most everything else can actually be done remotely pretty well, and agents are are very well, very good at doing that. And now the two two reasons that you'd probably have people coming around would be a if an agent is uh, needs to come to value the property and do the photography and all that, and then for viewings, right? But so for valuations, you should definitely speak to your agent if you're thinking of coming to market. Speak to your local agent because it's possible that they will be able to accurately value the your, your property without having to go there physically they have access to huge amounts of data uh, mm -hmm. and they often know the local market like the palm of their own hands you know so it's likely that if you provide them some information some measurements um, uh, maybe show them around with FaceTime or Skype or something like that, that they'll be able to to um, accu uh, provide you with a, a, an accurate valuation as, as for viewings these can also be done remotely. Um, we're actually at right move right now as we speak. We're doing some work to try and see what we can do to help uh, agents and users to 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 um, to to improve their experience with this. Um, so maybe to answer the question as to whether you come should come to market or not, one of those the the a smart way to go about it might be look if you've already had your property valued, certainly if you've already had the photos taken. Definitely go ahead with it and get the ball rolling. Um, if you're at the very early stage and your property hasn't been valued yet, there hasn't been any photography, um, speak to your local agent because you know they might advise you to to hold fire and maybe get the property ready for when uh, for when they can do. You know, I, I bet there's a lot of people out there right now actually who are thinking, oh, that wall that I've been thinking of painting now for the last year now yes. now's a good time to get the property looking uh get it get it in shape so that when the time's right uh it'll be ready for the photos and all the rest yeah i think you, you, you touched on some really uh interesting points there certainly there's there's for a lot of people time in the house to um fix up so they can get market ready um but facilitating remote viewing so this is an area where estate agents have been particularly creative mark have you seen um many examples of of agents and how they're showing potential buyers uh, around around people's properties remotely if the property is already listed um they will have either created a 360 tour uh, right. which you download or they'll have stitched together the internal photographs to give the impression of a tour 
they may well have uploaded additional photographs uh, now because if you know if you've had your property on the market the the agent will have taken numerous photographs um, yeah. so they've got a lot of technology that they've already adopted which may have been secondary before because people physically wanted to go out of it out to see the property now the agents are being creative they've employed this new technology um, to enable you to see everything about the property uh, from aerial photographs down to internal views um, area reports all that sort of thing so there's a whole heap of information out there for the prospective buyer to see and don't hesitate to pick up the phone don't email pick up the phone and talk to the agent because they'll be able to tell you an awful lot about what's going on in the area what's happening behind the house who what it adjoins all those sorts of things and they are there they're all like us all um, confined to the house but they're still working yeah yeah, exactly that. I um I was speaking to one of one of our agents, uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. I lose track. Um, but they were saying they're, I mean, they've they've stripped back on the technology and they're doing a group call on WhatsApp. So they've got the estate agent on one uh, on one line. They've got the vendor, so the, the seller, on the other line. Then they've got the buyer, um, and they're all in this video chat together. Now the agent is talking. Uh, the, 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 the buyer around the property and the, and the seller, all the seller has to do is just point the camera and walk around and the, and the agent's doing all the talking. And it just seemed like a really simplistic but really effective way to take someone around. Now, obviously they can't come around and that's going to be harder maybe to get offers on, but at least then you're lining up some serious, serious buyers for the point where um, that might be able to be um, going forward in that direction. Absolutely. You know, just just to add to that, agents are very very good at building pipelines as well, right? So, yeah. so even so, if you've done a few of these remote viewings, even if someone doesn't actually go and put the offer in, although there are still a lot of people putting offers in and accepting offers, this is still going on. But even if there are less of those, agents are very good at getting all of these lined up, so that uh, the moment that this is lifted, all of these uh, restrictions are lifted, um, you may already have uh, a few potential buyers lined up and waiting uh, to put an offer on your house. Yeah, Absolutely. exactly. Thank you. Um, okay, so, so moving in um, through the process a little bit further. So, so, so kind of addressing the market conditions feels like, um, it's, it, you know, it, it, leave it on, keep going uh, and potentially do bring it on. Now, there's a lot of concern and a lot of confusion for people that are already in that chain, that are already further down that process. A lot of confusion around what happens at exchange and then what happens at completion. So I've got a, a, a group of questions around there. Um, firstly, um, we are due to exchange in three weeks. What problems could we face and how could we avoid delays? So Mark, I'll, I'll, I'll throw that one to you first, if that's okay. Well, first of all, make sure that you're talking to your lawyer and your agent on a very regular basis. Uh, understand the motivation to move from the person that you're buying from, because in all likelihood, it will be part of a chain. Um, the Law Society issued their protocols um, uh, late on Sunday night, but the, they've got recommendations there in terms of proceeding to exchange with a flexible delayed completion. But again, as I say, it's all about making sure all parties are communicating so that they understand the pressures, but continue. So make sure your, your lawyer will be working at home. Most of the things that they do, they can do um, from a laptop. Um, searches can be done online. Uh, EPCs, well, they still have an EPC anyway, but most of the things that happen during a sale um, can still continue. Um, there will be possibly an issue if you do not yet have a mortgage offer. Um, hopefully, prior to the shutdown, a valuer was able to visit the property you're buying, so that would be all right. But lenders can do what's called an AVM, which is an automatic valuation model, uh, and providing the loan to value is not too great, uh, that can move uh, that can move ahead. So don't panic, don't withdraw. Uh, sales take quite a long time to go through in any event you don't want to go back to square one so keep talking um, we don't know where we're going to be in three weeks um, but contracts can still be exchanged it may be in the short term more difficult to facilitate a completion um, because of the pressures of self-confinement 
Perfect, thank you. And um, do, 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 you, do, do we know, are the, are the government looking to um, put a stop to any new exchanges of contracts? Uh, no, uh, I've spoken to um, uh, the government this morning uh, and in their own words, what can we do to help the market? What, we could, what can we do to make it move forward? So they are um, very focused on assisting um, rather than resisting or stopping yeah. things from happening. Yeah. Fantastic. And that's a really positive sentiment that they're going to try to help things move forward and th th that it's not a, a, a tools down, completely stop the market. Yeah, well, so much of the economy revolves around house moves. Um, it gives job mobility. There are a whole load of industries that are attached to moving house uh, improvements that you made. So it's in their interest and in the economy's interest not to stall it. Yeah, fantastic. Um, Daniel, I'm going to ask this one for you because um, there's, there's, there's a slight technical twist on it, I'm guessing. Um, but I am buying a new build. I'm going to be completing on the 24th of April. So that's within the lockdown period. Um, so I obviously can't get there to do the signings because of the lockdown. Um, what can I do? Well, if it's a new build, I'm just going to assume that it's an unoccupied property. Um, and if, if that's the case, then you should be able to proceed pretty much as normally so long as you are um, keeping to all the precautions and the safety measures that the government has in place. Um, as for the actual signing, there are simple ways of signing documents remotely nowadays uh, that are just as legally binding and or official as a signature on a, a paper, right? Those systems like DocuSign, are easily available and the developer that you're buying the house from they should be um, able to provide the option of you signing something remotely so that you don't have to be there in person uh, we might talk a little bit about the difference of you know unoccupied uh, moving into an unoccupied or an occupied property mark i'm sure we'll have some more insights around mm -hmm. that but my understanding, and there is a certain ambiguity around the, uh, the, the advice given so far, but there are some more restrictions on moving into properties that are currently occupied. However, if vacant, uh, there's a lot more flexibility around there and things can pretty much uh, carry on as, as normal within the, the restrictions uh, and our safety measures. Is that, would you agree with that, Mark? Would you have anything to add yeah, to that? I would. And again, uh, with the Law Society's guidance, there is now guidance on uh, the measures you may have to take to sanitise uh, the property uh, that you're going in. Dan's absolutely right. If it's an empty property, that gives a bit more time and a bit, le a bit more leeway um, uh, to get it not just cleaned, uh, but sanitised. Obviously, if it's a new home, um, that's going to be much easier. Uh, and the developer, uh, who in a lot of cases is still working on site, although I think some of them have all come off now. Um, so you can do it. Um, it's just making sure again and again and again, you follow the government guidelines and they're not put in there to obstruct, they're put in there to help you. Uh, and while some of it is slightly ambiguous, uh, I think there is a way forward. And again, talk to your agent. We know house builders will do everything they can uh, to get you in because there's no one would chain it's their product and quite frankly they want your money um, so they will move heaven and earth uh, to get you in in a safe and proper way yeah it's, and there has been that kind of um, um, confusion I guess as to you know what, what's classed as unoccupied what's just vacant and kind of where are the um, where, where are the where are the middle grounds on there um, one of the things that the government have said is obviously there's a bit more flexibility in completion if it is vacant or unoccupied. Um, but then there's um, this this word of the, or, or this phrase, uh, critical moves. So where um, both parties can't agree on a, on, on a change in completion date. But um, can you offer a bit more guidance about what, what, a, what defines a move as critical? Um, well, again, they haven't been precise. Um, hmm. Dan mentioned earlier there will be reasons that you have to move. It may be health, it may be uh, centering around a job, it may be something around a family. Um, it's critical, in other words, you have no choice but to move. Um, and then that, that, that can be accommodated. 
they are not out there at the moment policing this and so they're not saying oh why is that happening but i think everybody sensibly um well i think that's worth be sensible these things can happen if it is absolutely critical but what is critical and what's not is uh, a bit subjective it's, it's the balance between yeah. critical and your own health and your own well-being as well. So how, how much do you want to move and how much of a risk do you want to take in, in, in that circumstances? If you can delay and everyone's OK, then it seems like you a good have, You have to factor in the removal companies and the British Association of Removers a week ago said um, all their lorries should stay in place, all their staff should um, confine themselves to home. So the, the removal industry has gone... Um, has, disappeared for the short term there are other ways of doing it you can self-move but just again be careful about doing that um, but they are looking at ways of getting around it but for instance um, their argument is that they on an average move they will touch 700 items wow. uh, in, in your house two people have to carry mattresses so uh, for their own members uh, they need to be absolutely clear that it's safe but they are working on protocols um, because they need it to be, they need the market to be unfrozen, particularly where deals have already, have sales have already exchanged contracts and the completion is on the way. So that, I mean, that does, um, we have and have so many questions that have come in around removals and, and, and whether, whether they can even use them. So, so the government advice isn't necessarily as strict as, as, as Barr's advice, is it, with the, the British Association of Removals? The government haven't explicitly shut down removals, is that no, right? Barr, Barr took that um, decision. Um, I know that there are moves taking place with removal companies that are not members of the British Association uh, of Removers, uh, but be cautious, um, but things can happen, but you need to do your research. Again, talk to your agent um your agent will be super keen to get the deals through so again they will be looking to find um who can move you who's available to move you and who can mo move you under the health protocols that are currently in force thank you um, um, so, just another thing sorry. to quickly add to that would be with uh, around yeah. the removal firms is uh, the government did say that removal should honor their existing commitments so anything that you've already booked um, any any service of theirs that you've booked beforehand, hopefully um, they will sh still be um, honouring that commitment. Just wanted to, to, to throw that in there. Yeah. But again, Perfect. talk to if that's what you've done, talk to your removal people now. Yeah. 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 Make sure that everyone's happy as early on in the process as possible. Um, to kind of linked into, into into isolation and 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 chain progression, um, Dan, I'm going to ask uh, this one for you. Um, what what happens if by the date of completion a member of the chain has to self isolate? So obviously that would be extremely unlucky to take place kind of on on the day, but there's a two week window leading into that point. What what what's your advice in that scenario? So. What the guidance says so far uh, is, is actually it puts a lot of the onus and the responsibility on uh, the conveyancer and, uh, the, and the estate agent to actually liaise with all parties in a chain, if there's a chain, um, in order to, to um, make the decisions around that. So basically, if someone has come down with any flu-like symptoms, then they should not be moving. That is quite clear. Now, of course, when there's a chain, that's going to have a direct impact on other people, right? So if, if, if you're about to move, uh, if you're moving into your next home, someone else is moving into the one that you're currently living in, um, that's going to have like a domino effect. And the, the responsibility there, it seems, is very much with the conveyancer. And, and we all need to show some flexibility. In a case like that, um, I think it would be, it would it would be good for all of us to to show that we are in very uncertain times no one has planned for any of this a good thing though is that if you are in the situation and the conveyancer or the estate agent is having to liaise with other people in the chain i think you'll find that most people are actually as much as possible they're trying to be accommodating um, because we're all in this together no one is pointing the finger i mean look at us we're all here working from home you know if at some point uh, a cat walks across the, the screen or a child comes in through the room, we're going to be understanding, no one's going to be pointing the finger
fingers and saying, oh, that's not very professional, right? So I think that that, that kind of understanding and tolerance um, hopefully will be prevalent in most cases where, where there's a chain involved, and especially if someone has come down with, with, with symptoms. Perfect, thank you. Um, Mark, I'm going to ask this one for you, and there, there, there's lots of um, questions around this, and I, I, it's moving in, in kind of both directions, but looking at um, those uh, out there that are, are renting, uh, this, this specific scenario um, could answer quite a few. Um, our lease is up on the 13th of April, and our landlord is pushing for us to be out so they can move into the property themselves. Um, we don't feel comfortable moving in lockdown. What's your advice? Um, don't move. Uh, <laughs> stay put. Make sure you're continuing to pay the rent uh, under the uh, initiatives announced by the government yesterday. Um, no eviction can take place for three months. But again, start talking to your landlord now, not before the day you're due to move out. Um, yeah. But where would you, you know, you have to say, where would you go? Uh, also, where is he coming from? Uh, presumably um, he was be in the same position as you moving into your house but again communicate early um, be firm uh, if you, you you're not comfortable moving out you can't in fact look at another property at the moment to rent uh, I know that renting a property is not such a, um, a huge decision to be weighed up from a sales because the commitment is is less but if they are making these sorts of noises now um, particularly if you're using a managing, there's a managing agent being employed, uh, talk to them because they will be recommending to the landlord that really you, you can't move out at the moment because there is nowhere to go. And the government, the government, and the government will be sympathetic. Uh, they don't want to put people out on the streets. And what about people who are, um, they've already secured their, their, their new property to move into, uh, their new rental property? Um, are they able to move in the same way that um, you know, buyers and sellers are able to move? Uh, depends whether the property is empty. Uh, mm -hmm. It depends whether the property has had not just a deep clean, and that's a rental term for uh, a thorough clean, uh, but actually it's been sanitised. Um, and again, again, it's down to you to make a judgment. But again, talk to the letting agent, find out what the situation is. Can it be delayed? Uh, and again, communicate early and at all levels. Perfect. So I'm just reading through some more of these, uh, some more of these questions. There's a lot of questions that have come in um, around um, mortgages and their mortgage offers being uh, being extended. Um, the, 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 are, are we right in saying the current advice is that um, mortgage offers will be extended um, to those that are, are going through the process? Uh, the government's instruction to the lender uh, mm. is to be as flexible as possible with regard to mortgage offers. Uh, Mortgages have mortgage offers have a lifespan, which is normally three to six months, and then the property has to be in effect revalued, or the process has to go um, has to be repeated. Uh, they will be sympathetic. Uh, interest rates remain low, but I know that lenders will be um, having an eye to the loan to value. Uh, uh, in other words, how large is the mortgage compared to the value of the property? Uh, and they will also, I, I believe, be having uh, uh, an eye looking at the occupation uh, of the proposed borrower. But the instruction for the government, and again, I've spoken to them again today, and I was on the call with the Treasury Minister earlier, uh, that uh, they need to be as accommodating as possible. Perfect. But again, probably, probably best to speak to if you're if you're worried to speak to the broker, um, if you're using a mortgage broker or, or the agent, because they'll know what's going on on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah, and they're going to be able to help and advise, and you know the same with any of the, the people that you've employed to help you with this move. You'd, your lawyers and the estate agent themselves. Lots of questions in um, around. Um, how long do we think these delays are going to go on for? You know, it's kind of the unanswerable question, but do, do, do we think this is going to have a huge delay in, in kind of terms of transactions happening? I suppose ooh, there will be a delay in terms of 
um, existing transactions proceeding, but every part, all parties want that to move forward. It's when can you safely move, and the point that you can safely move will be the same point uh, that you can actually go out and look at properties and get an agent in. We don't, we don't know at the moment. We all listen to the government's uh, announcements uh, every evening, uh, and, it, and it does move very quickly. But I don't believe we're here just for three weeks. Yeah, and Daniel, I guess for for those of you that are um, early on in 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 the process, so you're still having remote viewings and things like that. But the the impact that we're having, it's probably going to be a much smaller impact because it, I mean it, the, the the length of actually selling a house is is quite a long time, isn't it? It's, it's, it's months, not weeks, typically. So if you're early on in the journey, um, do you think that will have as big of an impact in in that process? The impact on, uh, I didn't understand the question, so, 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 sorry. So, so the, lo the lockdown, the fact that, the, the, we, um, that we're on lockdown, will that have a less, uh, will that have a smaller impact if you're earlier on in the journey rather than quite far down in the chain? I think it depends very much how long, obviously, this is all going to go on for and we don't know. So it seems like the prudent thing to do at this point is to move forward as much as you can. And if you're earlier on in the, in the in the journey, do as much as you can with what you have. And again, working very closely with your agent and getting their advice because they're the ones who are um, who, who 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 can tell you exactly what kind of activity is going on, not on a national level, but on your street, in your town. You know, they, if, if if they'll be able to know if there's interest, if there are inquiries going in, and all that. So I'd say that, that, that one of the best things you can do at this point is to make your local estate agent your best friend and to, to, to stay in touch with them and find out what they um, are recommending to their clients because that's probably the best uh, advice you're going to get at this point. Could I just add as well that if you are early on in the process or uh, about to commence the process. There's an awful lot of work that you can do in gathering information about your property. We've just put in place a new sales protocol, which means your property will be market ready and sales ready, so that when you do go on the market, you do instruct a conveyancer, you've already got all the information that they will require, and that can save weeks and weeks and weeks. You've got an opportunity of trying to find a copy of the lease, trying to find a copy of the FENSA certificate for your windows, all those sorts of things that you've got, you can now get in place so you're absolutely ready to go. Perfect. Great advice. So using this time to shorten the length of the process when the brakes are taken off. Um, and that, that brings me to my next question. So I'm only going to take two more questions um, before we wrap up today. Um, Alexandra has asked, um, can people still make an offer and can we accept them in these periods? For example, um, people viewed um, my property before the lockdown occurred. Can I accept their offer? Yeah, certainly. They've seen the property. Uh, it's obviously your judgment, but providing the agent has checked out their ability to purchase, have they sold their own, uh, have they got a mortgage in principle? No, no. You can, if they've already seen it uh, and they're keen to secure it, uh, don't stand in their way. Perfect. And I'm going to ask one last question, um, if that's okay. Um, and that's, it's, um, let me see. Um, okay. So if I've got questions around um, the safety of moving with my removal company, um, uh, what's your advice on, on moving forward? Am I okay to cancel um, a, an agreement that's already been put in place? Um, I would say, I would look at the terms and conditions. This is um, not an insurable event. It's a force majeure. Um, and again, your removal company is going to be sympathetic. They don't want to lose you. Uh, they may have to postpone the earning event. But again, talk to them, talk to them sensibly, enlist the help of your agent, because um, he again will assist you in what to say and how to say it. So um, again, it's just about communicating and doing it early. Sorry, if I, Mark, I had a question just on the back of, of what you were, were saying in response to the previous question about sort of doing your homework and getting things ready for for the sale. Um, we do hear from a lot of agents that they will often go into a home to value it. Um, and after the valuation, the vendor or the seller will say, 
um, they'll, they'll, they'll want to come to market, but there's still a number of things that need to happen before they're actually ready to come to yeah. market. I was wondering if, if maybe, since you're in such direct contact with the state agents, what are uh, what's a, a a list maybe of things that typically are there, which uh, which the which people thinking of coming to market should already have done, so that by the time the valuation is done, they can pretty much assign the dot to the line and come straight on to market. Uh, well, things firstly, if it's a leasehold property, make sure the agent knows it's leasehold, and he should be asking you the questions. How? What is the unexpired term of the lease? Uh, what is the ground rent? And that will because that will affect currently uh, the ability for a purchaser to borrow. Um, what are the service charges? So if it's leasehold, there's that. You know, I, do you know what services are connected to your property? Do you, are you on main drainage? Because uh, if you're not, on, if you're on private drainage, there's new regulations that came in in January that you can speed up getting a certificate. Um, do, who is your lawyer? Not only have a name, but contact. They can start doing preliminary work um, for you. Um, so because no one likes to talk to a lawyer early. Uh, ask ask the agent you're intending to use. Can you have a property of his? Uh, sorry, a copy of his PIQ, which is a property information questionnaire, which has all these questions on it, which you can fill in, uh, which you can sign, uh, and you can scan and email back. So they've already got it there. So ask for that. They'll send it through to you, and they'll also tell you and talk to you, talk you through. Uh, the next form, which is the conveyances form, which is, I think, called the TA6. Um, but there's a lot of information that they'll ask on there. Again, you can prepare yourself um, to answer those questions, rights of way, is it a shared drive, all those sorts of things uh, that they'll be asking for you. Um, fixtures and fittings, what are you going to leave, what are you going to take? Um, you can look at those. You know, you're going to be in your house for a couple of few weeks, so you can get those things sorted. Yeah, a number of things there. Yeah, yeah. that's this. Yeah, perfect. Thank you, thank you guys. Um, so we are drawing to a close for today's session. We've uh, the, the the sheer level of questions that have come through. It's been it's been almost impossible to pick out um, the right questions uh, from from the ones that have already been pre-submitted. Um, so. Daniel, I'm going to ask you um, a question. Uh, one last question, then, then Mark. Daniel, um, what's your, your your final piece of advice for anyone who's not got their property yet on the market, or or is really early on in that stage, have just put their property in the market in the last kind of four weeks or so? Well, going back to, I think it was the first question that you asked. Um, if your property has already been valued previously um, and especially if the photography has already been made then I see no reason whatsoever for why you should not come to market contact the agent that valued it for you and and get things going because you might actually be surprised at the amount that at the level of interest that it could generate um, if you're a bit further down the process um, uh, I mean sorry earlier on still and you haven't had your property valued I'd say uh, well, as with almost everything else that we talked about so far, get in touch with your local agent and get their advice. Because what you see on the news, um, even what you may hear from us is right move, you know, we're looking at things on a national level. But if you want to know exactly what's the best way to go about things on within your particular house, um, the agent will be able to give you advice specific to 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 the street that you live in, the the the, the type of house that you that you are, are willing to that you are interested in selling or buying. Um, I'd also like to and sort of summarize what you said at the very beginning, so the the disclaimers there that in spite of all of this. All the advice that you're hearing from us here today, but and, and and any other advice that you get, the number one priority, please, please, is that you remain safe, and that you you keep yourselves um, healthy, that you keep in line with the 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 recommendations from that the government and the NHS are giving to us for our own safety. Um, stay at home, wash your hands do all those things that we need to do in order to to keep you and your loved ones and your communities safe so 
Perfect. Thank you. And, and Mark, in the interests of, uh, of of safety, but also kind of you know, looking at what has to happen, anything um, that you would like to put in as a, as a kind of final takeaway for those that are already in the process, that are in that chain, uh, and they're feeling a bit in limbo at the moment? Um, I can understand people's frustration and the house moving is a stressful period in any event, and that's only being compounded um, by recent events. Um, talk to people, talk to your agent, talk to your lawyer, uh, keep it up there, manage your expectations. If there are issues down the line, flag them up now. Uh, but I'd really reiterate uh, what Dan has said is just keep safe. Don't try and circumnavigate things. Don't try and be creative. Don't go freelance. Um, we're in a serious situation, but that doesn't mean to say that we're at dead stop. Fantastic. Absolutely. Um, Mark? Daniel, um, thank you very much for taking some time out and helping clear up some of the confusion uh, around the, um, the, the difficult times that we have, um, certainly within um, property and moving. Um, thank you very much to every single one of you that have come on um, to watch today. Thank you to all of you that have submitted your questions. Um, genuinely, really sorry that we couldn't answer all of them. There were just too many, but we hope that we've covered uh, as broad a topics as possible to most of you have had your questions answered in some way, shape or form. We have recorded today's session. It will be um, uploaded onto the Right Move um, Property blog, uh, it, it, hopefully within the next sort of 24 to 48 hours. So if you do want to catch up on the recording, do check in there. Um, but thank you again for tuning in. And uh, above all, as Daniel said, and everyone else has said in this, stay safe, um, put your own personal um, and everybody else's well-being uh, at the forefront of any of your decisions. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.